In the final working session, we are probably talking the most important thing, which is people-to-people -people contact. Because ultimately, the relationship between two countries is determined by its people. And to chair and moderate this session, I shall be requesting Professor Atar Rahman to chair the session, who is an <coughs> eminent political scientist of Bangladesh. He is also the president of the Political Science Association in Bangladesh. He has had a very long, distinguished academic career in Dhaka University, where he has chaired two important departments and has also had a very long career and experience of teaching in a number of foreign universities, including United States, Singapore, and many others. Yes. So the last session is a very able hand, and Professor, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Jenjun, uh, for introducing me so graciously. Of course, you are always gracious, but you are also tough. And uh, uh, when the job is to be conducted, you see, that's a good uh, First of all, just as a way of uh, remarks, uh, because this session is so important, uh, whatever you do, you see, ultimately, uh, it's the human beings. I said, you know, everything depends on human beings, their connectivity, their connection. So Japanese, uh, Chinese are building a lot of roads and highways now, but ultimately, if they cannot reach the people, nothing will happen. So uh, that's what I'm saying because my experience of working for uh, 30 years, I worked with Japan and uh, also I set up or founded an institute of Japanese in Dhaka University. And I realized that uh, how language is a barrier and then how the culture is a barrier. But then still we can have cooperation. So Bangladesh is having a second wave of relationship, not with Japan, but fortunately with now the rising China. So Japan's relationship is slightly now, you see, down the hill, but the China is up the hill. So this is this is very, I, I would say, we are very fortunate as a nation, you see, that we got uh, now a new partner in our development as well as our security and uh, also cooperation between man and man, you see, all uh, human beings. With these words, I would uh, first of all uh, invite uh, Professor Dilara Chaudhary, uh, she, we happen to be, you know, graduated or, you know, got a degree in the same year, Professor Chaudhary, and she's a very distinguished professor and uh, she had a nice, wonderful career, a Fulbright scholar, so she has a lot of, you know, uh, qualifications worked in different institutions, a lot of experiences, talks incessantly, sometimes when she's angry, you see, and <laughs> but she knows uh, that uh, she has the cool as well. This is an American way, you see, so don't, don't take it uh, uh, otherwise. Uh, she taught uh, also uh, in Jahangir Nagar University, North South University, so and she has a wonderful career. So she will talk on, you see, the human factor in Bangladesh-China cooperation. I don't know the real title, but I, th I thought she's going to say something on that type of thing. 
So Professor Jody. I thank uh, General Huni uh, and the institution for inviting me to speak at this August gathering. I am really very happy that I was given, I have been given this opportunity to say something before our Chinese guest. As a Bangladeshi, uh, I am also a friend of China because Bangladesh and China has, have special friendship. And I visited your country several times, but I only went to the East Coast, never been to the western side of China. So once this corridor is in place, <laughs> how long it will take, I know, but I won't be there. But I hope I'll be there to use that corridor to go to Yunnan. I have seen a documentary about Yunnan by National Geographic, and I was really, really <coughs> so surprised to see the beauty of that province. It's just wonderful, and the wildlife you have in the forest of Yunnan. Well, having said that, I want to now start with my presentation. The PowerPoint presentation I have actually is has been written rather hastily, and it is mostly, you know, the important points uh, which I noted. Track to, or people to people contact. Actually, you know, when I was a student in the university and uh, studying international relations and making of foreign policy, one of the factors we were taught that people will, must have a say in the foreign policy making of the country. But you see, all these years, until 1970s, it was always state to state mostly. So this people to people contact or people's input in the foreign policy making of the country or the track to is very important, which originated in the 70s. And also along with this people to people contact, Another field of study has been added in the international relations, which is called political psychology. Because the psycho psychologists have come up with this idea while studying the interstate relations that psychic or perception of a country or perception about each other is very important. And I'll give you the example. The people of Bangladesh have, rightly or wrongly, had a perception, negative perception about India. People of Bangladesh have this fear that India will only dominate us. But about China, people of Bangladesh has a very good perception. Here is an Asian country which has, you know, made uh, strides in economic development and also is emerging as the superpowers. And it has been now the second largest economy. And prediction is that China will overtake US and will become the largest economy in the world. So we have very positive thinking about China and China's policies and China's activities in South Asia. That China does not interfere in the internal affairs of any country. And we have many proofs, ample proofs, about China's policy of non-interference in the internal affairs of any country, including Bangladesh. <coughs> and we are very happy about this uh, policy of China and uh, that China does not interfere, non-interference, and also but because, unfortunately, China, though, is a very close uh, level, uh, I hear that, you know, to go to Yunnan, you would take only two hours plane journey, uh, which is, you know, very close. 
but we have no freely known our neighbor that much. The contacts between China and Bangladesh have been mostly state to state level. The people to people contact have just started. And uh, I'm sure this people to people contact will strengthen our relationship. And we will be benefited economically and otherwise. And that track too, of course I don't, don't need to explain this to you, that this is a kind of diplomacy where the citizens, groups, organizations and institutions, in another word, the civil society, the concerned citizens, play a role in diffusing the conflict. And I'll give you one big example that when North Korea was threatening to launch its nuclear um, nuclear weapon uh, testing uh, uh, and West was concerned and President Z Jimmy Carter made a trip to North Korea and that conflict was diffused. So individuals and people, they all can play a role in bringing two countries together. The disputants may have a problem or may not have a problem. But in bringing two countries together, people-to-people -to -people contact is vital. Well, having said that, let me tell you that uh, the two important factors which have brought Bangladesh uh, together, Bangladesh and China together. Number one, China's rise has been peaceful. Although, you know, some experts will challenge that, but, you know, if you really study China's role in the world affairs, you will find that their eyes have been peaceful. And China is very eager to give an image to the rest of the world as a soft state. That means dealing with the countries with their needs, economic development, infrastructure, in other words, you know, having cooperation so the lives of the ordinary human beings can be improved. And this is one thing. And another thing, if you look at the economic development of the Chinese people within the boundaries of the state, you find that uh, there, is a, uh, there, is a, there is some kind of equality, inequality between the development, economic development in the eastern coast and western side. Western side and to some extent southern, which are really very mountainous. And as a result, China has developed a. Oh. Okay. As a result, China has a policy now which is called Western Development Strategy. In another word, and this strategy is being developed under the ages of look south. At the same time, Bangladesh, where economic development leading to the improvement of people's life has been foremost in the, uh, uh, in the uh, you know, activities of Bangladesh government. And recently, we find that Bangladesh also has made strides in economy economic growth. Uh, you know, the Bangladesh is very fast globalizing and Bangladesh will probably become the second largest economy within the South countries. But in order to do that, Bangladesh will really need to take a lot of initiatives to get integrated with the Eastern countries, Bangladesh Eastern countries. That means, you know, China, Myanmar, and Southeast Asian countries. And this is really the need of the time for Bangladesh. So here we find that there is a convergence between China's look south policy and Bangladesh's look east policy. As a result, we can very uh, positively actually look at uh, how this was it? We can have look at the development between these two countries. Uh, 
hopefully and we feel sure that the interaction will bring benefits to both the countries. So it will really be a win-win situation. And keeping this one country, you all know that the Kunming, uh, Kunming initiative was taken in 1999. And this track to uh, uh, activities, diplomacy, among these four countries have turned this initiative into what is called a forum, BCIM. And this forum, the way track two, the objective of track two is to influence track one. And this initiative, turning it into a forum, has affected the track one policy of both India and China. And this is very much evidenced by Chinese Premier Li Keqiang's visit to uh, India at the first official meeting of the forum. And we can see that because of this kind of influence by the track two on track one, the, there have been many people to people contacts between India, especially Calcutta. This, that is why actually the uh, uh, Chinese Premier, you know, and the Indian government decided. Many people to people contact between India and China. So we feel that there are positive signs in making people meet each other, discuss their problems, and suggest the remedies. However, there are negative factors as well. Like, you know, number one is the suspicion and fear in South Asia in their interstate relations. Bangladesh has a very good official relationship with India. It is, it is very good and cordial, but below that state-to-state -state level, people have suspicion about India's actual role and ambitions in this country, I mean, in this area. And also, Bangladesh has so far overlooked Bangladesh's connection with the East, like Myanmar, or Southeast Asian countries, and to speak, also to speak of the southern province, like Yunnan in China. Now, of course, Bangladesh government is very eager to have these connections, you know, uh, be beneficial, make beneficial connections with the countries which are located in the eastern part of Bangladesh. And Myanmar recently has a change of regime from military to civilian, and Myanmar is going ahead with reforms. And China already has made connections with Myanmar. China has a road connection with Myanmar, and then China also has a, uh, uh, also, also has a port uh, in the southern part of Burma. And we, Bangladeshi, as Bangladeshi, we believe, we, we, we believe that these negative factors, and also there are negative factor, factors like what have been discussed in the morning sessions. Trafficking, drug trafficking, human trafficking, and then, you know, terrorism, which has become now a number one threat for the world security. So these, we want to work out with China through the people-to-people -people contact. And this forum, which has been able to influence the policy India's track one policy, hopefully in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh also, Bangladeshi people, like this organization, having contact with a think tank in China and more collaborations, we will be able to actually contribute positively on the track one policy of Bangladesh. So having said that, let me go to the definition. Of course, you know, I have already talked about this definition, you all know what people-to-people -people contacts are. 
these contacts are between the institutions, organizations, individuals, experts, specialists. In another word, people's voice in telling their government that this is what is good for our country and this is how we should formulate the policy. So what I learned in the college when I was a student, I see it being put in practice these days. Ultimately, it is the people whose lives are affected by the government actions. So, government of any country should listen to what people are saying. And also when you have a people to contact, people to people contact, you can speak more candidly. You know, there is something, there is something called diplomatic language. That means when you talk in diplomatic language, you withhold many you, you withhold many issues. Professor, you have only three more minutes. Oh, sorry. Finish. Thank so you. you withhold, you know, many uh, official, uh, many things which you cannot say, but people to people contact, you can do that. And like you said, only few, uh, uh, half an hour ago, that you will go back and you will prepare your report. That you will prepare your report to tell your government that this is what the civil society or think tank of Bangladesh has to say. So your government will get actually a very good picture about what the people of Bangladesh are saying and what they want to do about their relationship with China. So this is the background oh, I have already, again I have already discussed this. We have a very state-to-state -state level, good state-to-state -state, um, uh, relationship. There is defense cooperation. Uh, there is um, uh, trade, trade relation, although Bangladesh uh, balance of power, uh, balance of trade is in favor of China. We can talk about that, that how uh, there was a session in the morning, that how this gap can be bridged so that we have a healthy trade relationship and all that. So besides the government, this is what the people are saying. This is all about the history about our relationship, background relationship. But these are the sectors where we find that we can actually talk to the people of Bangladesh through the forums, like, you know, your institute, your uh, forum and the forum in Bangladesh. The educational exchange, uh, due to the shortage of time, I really could not get the information about the, but now, now we know uh, this is this much I know that people in Bangladesh are now paying attention to universities, are paying attention to Chinese language. That means universities like North South, especially the private universities, and Bragg University, they have Chinese language course uh, department. Not department, but Chinese language course. And teachers from China come to these universities and teach the students Chinese language. And not only Chinese language, but also they talk to the students about Chinese culture, and the art, and the history, and the architecture. So these students get a good idea about China. And also, this is sinking in the minds of the young people in Bangladesh that learning Chinese language is going to be a very good bonus for them. Because in future, when China will actually, you know, be the number one economy, if you can speak Chinese, you can get a job easily. And this is what I have seen in the USA also. American students now are very eager to learn Chinese. Because they can see that like English, you know, when you have learned English, you have an age. So if you learn Chinese, you will also have a what is called a head start. So in Bangladesh, this is already sinking, and I, 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 a former student of mine had asked me uh, that why should I go? Should I go to China or should I go to Turkey? Because he got a fellowship to do his PhD. And I said, what do you think? He said, of course, China. He said, it madam? I said, yes. So he is in China now doing his PhD. So this has already infiltrated, infiltrated maybe not so deeply, but at least, you know, a tremor in the education sector that learning about China is going to be important for us. 
And private universities like Bragg and North South, in both these places I taught, and there is a feeling, and the policy by the board, we talked about it in the policy decision making, policy making decision making, that this Chinese language course, that should be converted into China study center. For Bangladesh, it is important for us to study China. It is also important for us to study India because these are two most important neighbors and both are rising economy. And when it comes to people-to-people -people contacts, we have more with India than with China. Okay, for historical legacy, you take some tourism, religious tourism, I don't want to actually, you know, uh, explain uh, them in details. Uh, let me see what I have. Educational exchange. I already talked about it, but here is some details about it. Not very details, but a brief sketch. Okay? Then tourism and cultural. Now private citizens are forming groups and going to China and coming back with, you know, full of appreciation about China's history, China's culture, and the places of interest, okay? And then, you know, this is about the cultural, tourism, of course, you know, uh, in the morning session, we hear that people of Iran, you know, they have seen mountains only not seen, but many in Bangladesh, we are from Greenland, we have not seen mountains, so that should create, and also the Chinese history is so old that naturally people have interest to go and visit China. Okay, and, and this is, uh, is China, Bangladesh, people to people challenges, which are listed here. Uh, India has that age over us because with India we have more contacts historically. And we, we share similar, somewhat similar cultural, you know, uh, we have similar cultural backgrounds and all that. But with China we need to work more in this area, the cultural, uh, changes. And this is what about the trade that we should try to work to uh, reduce the trade gap, have more cultural exchanges, have tourism enhanced. And <coughs> this is some of the points here I have for uh, 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 you know listed. China already is paying a lot of you know giving funding for the instruction and infrastructure. So, Sarah, please Quit. conclude. Okay. Okay, here is the conclusion. Here is the conclusion. That we stand with China, with their one China policy. There shall be no deviation from that. And we will always hold China dear to our hearts for helping us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, we underscored the main points that people to people and uh, I just I was just thinking that China is making a big bridge, Padma Bridge, so it will also take the efforts of the Padma Bridge to connect the peoples of the two nations because language is the barrier, you know, so to learn. So and she said it very clearly that uh, language, we have to understand the culture, of course, quick. And uh, finally, she, I think, uh, remarked uh, exactly what we need is tourism and exchange. Because when I was in Kunming, to your place, I realized that tourism and also General Manu Zaman's agenda of tourism, development of tourism is very important. But we are not prepared yet, you know. So that's our problem, but uh, China, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Dilara, for wonderful thoughts. And uh, I would uh, now request uh, this Miss uh, He Kong Long, yes, please, to paper. But you have only ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. I'll okay. Work. If you can. I'm to the time. Minute. Oh, that's good. That's good. good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to be here. And I'm very warmed 
and uh, moved by your warm hearted. Thank you again. Now today my topic is more corporations and a deeper friendship, closer culture communications and cooperation between Bangladesh and Yunnan. Um, in my topic, I just have uh, three parts. The first, I will just look back the uh, histories and also some situations uh, uh, happened in their cultures and uh, also some uh, just tourism. And the second part, I just uh, give you some uh, situations about uh, the tourism and also education, cooperation and communications between two uh, sides. I mean, Bien and uh, also Yunnan province and Bangladesh. The third, our prospects and the suggestions in terms of the facilitations, cultural communications between Bangladesh and Yunnan. Now the first, I will just give some more details about cooperation in tourism between Bien, I mean Yunnan and the Bangladesh. As you know, Bangladesh is a world famous country and the birthplace of Buddhism. It is become of the world's longest strength of beach, the world's largest uh, mangrove forest, largest Buddhism temple and the rare Bengal tiger. Yunnan province is one of the provinces with the most abundant tourism resources in China boasting wonderful natural landscape and the diverse ethnic cultures. In the year 2014, yes, in the year 2014, the total tourism revenue of Yunnan hits 14, 14, 14 1.2 billion US dollars and the income of inbound tourism arrived at 2.4 billion US dollars. The numbers of visitors totally at 281 point million. Among these, 3 million are abundant, uh, inbound, inbound visitors. Tourism has developed into a pillow industry of Yunnan. Just as you know, colorful Yunnan, a paradise of tourism is known just outside. For many domestic and international friends, they are longing to visit Yunnan to enjoy its food and poor tea. In recent years, Yunnan and Bangladesh has opened more widely and engaged in tourism. Cooperation under regional international platforms like BCIM corridors, Bangladesh Yunnan dialogue meetings uh, forum. Significant process has been made in traveling route promoting mutual tourism destinations marketing, mutual exchanges of visitors and the facilities of travel moment. On the year 2013, Yunnan province tourism developed Committee and the Bangladesh National Tourism Tourism Administration site MOU to strengthen tourism cooperation. You have seen. As an active participant of BCIM Tourism Circle, MOU site between two sites were offered more support to exchange of tourism sector practitioner and help them with marketing activities. Under such framework, two sides can seek mutual beneficial outcomes by making joint effort to develop routes for tour groups exploring of marketing investment in tourism sector, organizing experts visits, and sharing tourism promoting infection in informations. Now, 
In my part, I just give you some details about the education cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. In the year 2014, schools and education institutions at diverse levels have forged part part partnership with their counterparts from over 100 countries and regions. China foreign cooperative education programs cover more fields such as uh, preschool education, primary education, high education. High education institutions in Yunnan has received 10,000 overseas students from over 18 countries, 80 countries, and around 8,000 foreign students have been admitted by the secondary or primary school. Minister of the Education has approved seven higher education institutions to Chinese government scholarship universities, and the three have been credited as the undertake of China Asian Education and Training Center. Yunnan government launched the first local government scholarship named No Yunnan Government Scholarship. Since then, a growing number of students of South Asia and the South Asia have come to Yunnan. You can see in the year 2014, more than 100 students from Bangladesh study in Yunnan. Um, that is, uh, most of students, they just study in the medical, uh, medical university college. So that is increased and 58.5 compared with the previous year and the seven students have won a provincial government scholarship. So that is, means a lot of Bangladesh students just uh, in Yunnan to study. So, I will give you some good examples. What is the cooperation between the Yunnan and the Bangladesh? You can see the pictures. Yes. First, Confucius, Confucius Institution jointly set up by Yunnan University and North South University of Bangladesh. Confucius Institute was officially opened in February in the year 2006 by Yunnan University and the North South University. Since its inception, various kind of cultural activities has been held. Chinese speech contents, overseas visitings, fine arts exhibitions, National Day photo exam exhibitions, and academic lectures, etc undertaken together with embassy include Chinese culture presenting, performance, and exhi exhibition tours of Confuci Confucius Institution headquarters. Acted as the part of organizer of Chinese bridge contents. So many things, talking about teachers training Totally 24 individuals of two training sections has received training. So the second, I just show you. And the Yunnan College students art delegation sent to Bangladesh for Arctic performance. Yunnan Provincial Department of Education organized Yunnan College students art delegation to stage performance in Bangladesh. At that time, uh, this uh, performance was be liked, was be loved uh, by all the Bangladesh people. And uh, this performance has further spread Chinese culture, deepened the understanding of Chinese language, culture, and art among the public of Bangladesh. Arouse person among Bangladesh people to learn Chinese language and know its culture and it has built deeper friendship between people of two countries. Third, Yunnan University of Finance and Economic invite Professor M.D. Moster Roman 
the first senior have a level researcher from Bangladesh to teach statistics in the year 2010. And in the year 2011, Professor Ruman has published 10 academic papers in the name of YUNFE in many well-known domestic of international jurors. So, what I just give you all these informations and all these examples, I just want to give my uh, suggestions and uh, respects uh, to facilitation the culture communicating uh, communications between Yunnan and Bangladesh. Uh, for myself, I, uh, I think the first strengthening the tourism corporations suggest first we should jointly formulate that regional tourism development plan. We should join in with South Asia countries <coughs> promote the development of regional tourism planning and the introduction of a number of banquet tourism routes and make use of the exi existing uh, a network within the region to provide quality tourism service and the tourist facilitations and the promote establish of BCM tourism circle and the China South Asia International Tourism Circle. Second, jointly promote construction of regional international channel. The condition of ethnic of the construction of the channel are gradually improved in recent years especially the successful implementations of Rally Championship of BCI, which brought a new vitality to the construction of the region international channel. We should join the development regional construction planning. And the third, we should join in build regional tourism talent's trading system. Talent is a de de decision factor in the career achievement. We should give full play to the advantage of both sides to take practical and effective measures to jointly establish regional tourism personal trading system for providing a large number of tenements con constituents in urgent need of cooperation countries. So the last, the last I just give some suggesting for to how to uh, implement and how to promote in the adaptations. As myself, I just gave there some suggestions. First, strengthening highly education cooperation between the mainland China, especially Yunnan and Bangladesh, enhancing exchanges and the cooperations in fields of education, educations in Yunnan and Bangladesh. And also the third enhance the third enhance the exchanges and the share of education information. Increase of the government scholarship awarding to the students of Bangladesh. Coming to China, more students from Bangladesh attract to study in Yunnan. Recommendations of co corporations of university in Yunnan and Bangladesh. And we established of mechanisms for exchange teachers and the students, and the support and the encourage of teacher students visits, teacher training, teacher semester, and the other school exchange activities among various schools at two sites. The fourth, focus on the exchange of young, young, youngs from both sides. The young's communication is an essential part of China. So enhanced friendship has a long uh, between them. We should continue to encourage the parties of Yunnan, India, and Bangladesh to carry out a variety of short-term com communicative activities among the middle school students, increasing mutual understanding and trust, and enhancing the friendship of youth between China and India. The last, last large BCM University Alliance for Higher Education Institutions and actively promote 
the in industry is establishment of regional mutual cognizance of academic degrees and diploma mechanism to achieve higher quality, higher quality education resources. They have the four countries of BCIM are close to each other. The communications among countries are being closer and closer. They have their own advantages, um, mutual teaching experience, and the wealthy of scientific <coughs> research results in different display, powerful communication, and advantage complement of college and u university are conductive to accumulate the pros of international <coughs> education. <coughs> so at last, I want to take a little time to talk about uh, culture exchange and cooperation in an important way of people to deeper mutual understanding and enhance mutual trust between two countries. Yes, we should, we should, we should actively promote a wide range of culture exchanges and cooperation between governments and the civil societies of two countries and establish China Bangalore Culture Exchange Center. Intensively exchanging more cultural groups, carrying out cultural performance, jointly organizing. Culture Week and the regular carrying out performance of art, drama, film, tourism, and so on. Dear guests and friends, uh, <coughs> Bilateral relations between China and Bangladesh have developed rapidly. The culture exchange and the mutual interaction has become increasingly friendly. The exchange of projects has been proceeding step by step, and cooperation has great potential. Let's actively play the advantage of both sides on this exchange platform in that Bangladesh Cooperation Forum and make joint efforts to further expand cooperation in the fields and create a good future of cooperation in, and exchange in culture with the bad and the road initiate and the opportunity of building Bizarre Cooperation Economic Corridor. At, at the end, please allow me to say the new year is coming and may I wish you happy new year and good healthy for all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kongrong. I think uh, you have excellent presentation, and uh, we like uh, two of your main uh, foundation for cooperation. One is, as you said, tourism. Another is education. Those are the building blocks. Uh, these are the main bonds of relation between the two peoples. So, and uh, I was just thinking because it was astonishing because as the general also shares with me that uh, Yunnan alone gets 41.2 billion. And we get from uh, garments about 25 billion and we are shouting whole world, we are the lion. <laughs> of course, we end up with tiger, but you know, a small tiger, you <laughs> see. So that's, that's the approach, you know. So the point where I am making is that even for tourism, you need a stable Bangladesh. You need a safe Bangladesh, a well-governed Bangladesh. Otherwise, I am sure the Chinese will not come, you see. I was trying to rent some, uh, my own house to Chinese. Oh, oh no, whether there is any security problem or first they check it, you see. So it's very important that we should be a secure country. Otherwise we will not even give our houses rented to Chinese, you know, this is a big problem. Anyway, this is the same thing. And second thing, I was, uh, I was teaching, uh, doing research in Nagoya University. 
and uh, where there are so many Chinese it was, uh, who were studying. It's a graduate school of international development. And so many people, the you know, Chinese students, and they like, Japanese used to like Chinese students because they quickly understand things. You see. And at that time, I noticed that there are 400 Chinese universities. Now, so many new universities are created, opportunities for Bangladesh. But the question is whether we are prepared for it. You see. I think you should prepare us. It's not your duty, it's our duty. You see. So with that, uh, and then finally, I, I like your that idea, the culture, cultural exchange, yes. Uh, we have now